continue with part two of this unboxing series. And in this video I am going to put together this protective box and I'll show you if this laser can engrave on precious metals. So I am going to unwrap this and I'll show you everything that comes with this box. And this is it, you have the protective cover that exists of two parts, an exhaust fan and an exhaust pipe and of course everything you need to connect it with. Now putting this together is really easy because you just have to unfold this and place this on top. So this is the setup, it is looking really big, but I am sure that it will fit around my laser. I really like that you can still see what is happening through these uh, windshields. And connecting everything is quite simple. All we have to do is place this one on here, and then we connect the hose right there. And now I can connect this on the outside of the box. And this will go on the inside. And now all I need to do is plug it in. And this is the entire setup of the enclosure. And I don't know if you remember this bottom plate that came with the machine but was a little bit too small. I replaced it with this one that I got from my dad's workshop. So the enclosure was looking quite massive, but take a look here. This actually is a very nice fit. So everything is in here, including the air assist. And now I can choose if I want to hang this part out of a window or I can connect it to a HEPA filter. Since the previous video on uh, the Adams Tech A30 Pro, uh, I really dove into the software and I decided uh, to get to know Lightburn and uh, that's a really a very nice program to work with. So in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how I'm going to make a design in Lightburn. First off, if you go to the adamstech.com website, you can choose support and you can click on free design files. And I thought that would be a nice idea just to get started. And with Father's Day around the corner, let's make something for that. So you just click download. Then you can open Lightburn and as you can see I have my settings here. Uh, this is exactly the engravable surface of the engraving machine. So as long as I stay in uh, this square space here then everything should be fine. I am uh, going to open the design I just downloaded. And if you change this you can open a complete file. I'm going to zoom out a bit. I can take away that. And I don't want this little logo in here. So just click on it. And remove. And let's see if we can make this a lot smaller so it will fit on here. And before I am going to start out with the design itself, let's do a little test piece. I have placed some 4 mm thick piece of MDF in there that is 30 by 40 centimeters. Of course we are going to adjust the height. So I'm placing this thingy underneath. Slide down the laser. Make sure it's nice and secure. And then remove this one. As you can hear, I turned on the laser and I am just going to cut out a very small square at the bottom here. Just to test and see if I can cut through in one time. So let's change the speed here to, to 50 and I'm going to set this one at 80%. And by pressing this button here, 
you can see where the machine is going to engrave. I am going to show you. And if you want to adjust a bit, simply slide your material a bit in the desired direction and try again. I am simply going to press play in Lightburn and the laser is going to do its job. So I did a couple of tests here and they all went well and I am going to use these settings from the top one which is a speed of 400 uh, with a power of 85%. And now back to the settings for our original piece, the DAP project. And, and now I know I am going to have to set this at 400 with a speed of 85. And this should fit perfectly. Now there is always this function, so you can have a preview and see how everything is going to engrave. This is going to take 22 minutes, and I have found that the timing is pretty accurate, so a uh, thumbs up there. And then let's just press the play button and get started. And I wanted to show you this, the machine just stopped with engraving, my work is still in there and I'm very curious to see uh, how everything worked out and if it really cut through the material. Uh, but I wanted to show you this because there is no smoke or anything outside of the box, so uh, this really did its job, I'm very happy with it, of course you can still smell uh, burnt wood in here, but that's okay. Well, this first one popped out right away. So, looking very nice. But, as you can see, in the back, the top part didn't do so great. Of course, I can still... Um, do this, maybe we can press it out, so let's try it first. And what I can learn from this is, uh, next time uh, be a little bit more on the safe side and set the power or the speed a little different. So now I used a speed of 400 at a power of, I believe it was 85%. So next time I would go for the speed at 350 or maybe even 300. And then you can turn the power down a little bit and I think that would be enough. So do allow yourself to learn. And I am going to write down my conclusions, uh, just so when I go ahead and make another project, I know what I should do differently. And just take a look how precise this machine is with these little holes compared to my fingers. So I couldn't save them all, but I still have a very nice project here. So this is the back part. I'm going to add a little frame and repeat. And I am going to build up the design. Making sure 
Everything is nicely staying together. And while I am going to glue this together, I think it uh, will be nice to answer one of your uh, most asked questions after my previous tutorial on this laser. And that is if this one can engrave on precious metals. If you are looking for a machine like that to engrave and cut metal, then you are looking for a fiber laser. This is a diode laser and a fiber laser is a whole different ball game. So if you do want to invest in a laser like that, keep in mind that you will have to invest about six to eight thousand dollars, maybe even more, to get a very nice fiber laser machine. So that's a whole different type of machine. But I am going to test if this one maybe can etch metal. It uh, shouldn't, but I am quite surprised with how powerful this is so far. So maybe it will surprise us even more. And how cute is this? Of course, it still needs to dry and I have to clean it up. But this is so much fun to be able to make something like this. So I got rid of the box uh, just for video purposes. I have two pieces of sterling silver here. I uh, blackened this one with a black marker. And this one is roughly sanded because uh, you cannot put something with a reflective or a mirror-like surface underneath your laser. Let's just create a very basic shape. And let's just go ahead and And this up to 95%, the speed at 100, just to see what this is going to do. So, make sure that your silver is in place. And when it is, you can press the start button and the design will be forwarded to your laser. And as you can see, I totally misplaced the laser, but we still have this little line here. But it really feels like it's just a surface line. So let's see if we can take off the marker. And I even took out my magnifiers here, but there really is no depth in this line. However, you can use it to transfer a design onto your silver and start working from there. And again, I am engraving the blackened piece of silver. So we are going to uh, try it on uh, the other piece of silver as well. I set the speed at 10 and the power at 100%. So I decided to do this one straight away as well, but as you can see, uh, nothing happened on this one. So let's put it away and focus on the blackened piece of silver. And I'm going to run over here with my fingernail, but there is no depth whatsoever. So I think we are left with the same thing as we were before. So you can use it to transfer a design onto your metal. And of course, that in itself can be great uh, to use in your workshop, but I would never use it like this uh, to etch silver or something and give it to your clients or sell it, because this is a line that will fade very, very easily. So you can really see this as an extra bonus feature because uh, this machine really isn't designed uh, to work with metals. And I still haven't shown you everything because there is this camera you can use for your work and a rolling device so you can engrave round surfaces such as tumblers. I am going to show you more about this in just three days next Thursday. So I will be back with you Thursday and then I'm going to give you my final review of the Atomstack A30 Pro. Uh, and of course, after that, I am going to continue with my regular jewelry making. But I thought this was just way too much fun not to show you. 
So if you did enjoy this video or this little project, please let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and uh, I hope to see you again soon.